Hey folks, I posted some boxes to the Shapoko Facebook group the other day and I got a really good reaction from them. A lot of people requested the files and I was more than happy to share. I also thought it might be good to do a quick video on making your own boxes on Shapoko since they're one of the easier projects you can do. As you can see, I've made a number of boxes in different shapes and sizes, but they all have three things in common. There's a pocket on either one. There's a lip that's raised on the bottom and recessed on the top. And then there's the cutout of the actual shape. This means there's really only three things you have to do in order to make a box. So it does make them very, very simple. In this video, I'll show you how the boxes get laid out and give you some ideas for carving the top. But first, let's talk a little bit about the wood. Here are some suggestions for choosing wood for boxes. I tend to choose wood based on if I plan on carving the top or not. If I plan on carving the top, I'll tend to use something that's a little plainer. Uh, this is a mahogany, which is nice. Walnut. And then there is a maple here. This also takes a really nice carve. Now, if I've got something else that's a more highly figured wood, like this is cedar, and it's got a lot of you know interesting tones to the wood, I'll, I'll leave something like this plain, or like this Bakoda, has also got a lot of nice grain to it, or this Ambrosia Maple, which has all these really nice little wormy looking figure pieces in it. These I tend to leave plain um, and just let the wood speak for itself. But if I'm going to do something with carving, I tend to go more with the maple or the walnut or something like that. The maple's really good in that it takes a nice carve and when you finish it, the carved pieces tend to darken up a little bit. For example, on this box, you can see how that gets a nice butterscotch looking tone to it when it finishes and those little carved pieces darken up really well and give you a nice contrast. Since I plan on carving this next piece, I'm going to go ahead and go with this uh, piece of hard maple. And the key, once we start, is getting some really accurate measurements on this. So to begin with, we've got a length of, looks like 10 and 5 eighths by four. We've also got this piece right up here that's been kind of caved in. So I need to count that and figure that's about three and three quarters of useful space. One of the real keys here though is the thickness. And for that, I definitely recommend a set of dial calipers. This is gonna give you a really good clean measurement on how thick your wood is. And that's key to making sure that it doesn't break off when you're trying to cut things. So this looks to be 9.96 inches. So we'll go with that. Okay, let's start things by setting up the file for our boxes. We want to set the document properties first. And we had 10 and 5 eighths, which is 10.65 and a height of four inches. And our width, or thickness rather, was 0.86. I know I said 0.96, I checked it again. Measure twice, cut once. Um, so that's our thickness for our wood. We're gonna leave this in the lower left. Hardwood is fine. Uh, this retract height, as long as your table's flattened, I like to take this down to about two millimeters. It just cuts up a little bit on some of the time. So we'll tell it OK. I'm going to reset the view. It gives us the full width. Now the box we're going to make here is going to be four and three quarters by three. So we'll start with our rectangle. And we're going to do 4.75 by 3. Okay, and this is our outside dimension for our box. 
Now the easiest way I know to make the lip and the pocket piece is to use this tool, which is the offset path tool. There's some drawbacks to this that I'm going to show you in a minute, but for right now, go ahead and click this, and we're going to give it an inside distance of 0.17. Okay, so now we've got this one. This will be where our lip is, and then we're going to do the offset path again, and we're going to go another 0.17, and this will be where our pocket is. Now, one thing you'll notice is if we do this top and bottom, now let's say we co copy this, and now we've got a top and bottom. There's a drawback to this. The drawback is the lip, right? So these look like they would fit together because they're the same, essentially the same piece. The problem is you're cutting inside and you're cutting out with a bit. What I mean by this is let's take something like this and set it to the size of our bit, which for this, in this case, I'm going to use a quarter inch bit. Remember, this is radius, so it's half of that. So that represents a quarter inch bit. Now, I'm going to zoom in to show you this, and I'm going to turn off the grid. So if we come in and we make our pass, we can cut this fairly square because we're going around the outside. But on our bottom, we're going to be going around the inside. And what happens is you get into this corner, and there's this section here that the bit isn't going to cut which means your top and your bottom won't fit together. And this is a really big drag. Um, there's a couple of ways to handle that, and I'm going to show you two. Um, so the first one is when we drew our original box, right? We have the pieces. I'm going to break this apart. This one we originally drew as a square. And I've got an option here to set the corners. And I can fillet the corners, which means basically curve them. In this case, I'll set a fillet, and I'll go 1, 2, 5, which again is just the radius. It's not the full quarter inch. It's half of that. And if we apply, we get a nice rounded corner on our outer box, which is nice. We kind of want that. But if we try and do the same thing here, because we use the offset path, it's not giving us the option to do our fillet like we want. So we need to curve these but we need a different way of doing it. So here's the other way to do this. I'm going to keep our little quarter inch bit here and I'm going to give us another square that is a quarter inch square. All right. So I'm going to zoom in for this and I'm going to take our circle and I'm going to center it with our square. Now, I found a couple of times that I have to take the circle up about a hundredth of an inch in order to do this right. So let's apply that so that those really overlap. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to select the square first and then the circle. Hold down the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows. So now you notice the circle's got this nice little dashed line. That means when I use this Boolean subtraction, it's going to cut that circle out of the square. And in this case, give us four equal corners, right? So now we've got four equal corners like this. I'm going to reset my view, and I'm going to take one of these corners, grab the corner node, the upper corner node, and stick it to this guy. Same for each of the other ones. Stick them there. Grab a corner. Stick them there. And the last one. Okay, now let's zoom in here. So what we want to do now is grab our outside rectangle and then our inside corner. So now this has got the nice little dotted line and we do our subtraction again. And then we just reset the view and do it for our other ones as well. 
you may have to zoom in. I'm zooming in by scrolling, by the way. So let me subtract, reset, and you'll get used to the zooming in and out pretty quickly. Uh, but it's very, very helpful. Again, I'm just resetting, selecting that so that it's got the dotted line, and doing our subtract. So now when I reset the view, we've got a nice place right here. And we need a matching piece over here. So what I'm just going to do is get rid of this one. Function delete on the Mac. Or delete on the PC. And then I'm just going to group these guys. Copy them. And put them over here. And we're going to want to center these. And let's do the alignment tools. And I'm going to choose a line to stock because that'll center them on the stock. And I want to center them like this. Right, so that gives us a nice center there. Let's do this. And then I'm going to move them over just a hair so that they're approximately in the center that way. I just want to have room here for my clamps to work. So now we've got our lip piece where these should match now. We don't really care so much about the pocket that's going to get curved anyway. But now what we want to do is set our tool paths. So the tool paths we want to do first the lip. We'll do the upper lip first. Now this one is going to be a contour and we're going to go around the outside. So that means we're going to cut out here. right? That means we'll have a raised piece, and this piece will be shorter. I tend to do mine about 0.2, a little less than a quarter of an inch. That gives me enough you know, meat to where they fit together nicely. And again, I'm using a quarter inch bit for this. And I'm going to set this as top of And I'm going to come over here and choose this one. I'm going to do a contour on the inside. And I'm going to do this to one. I want to give it a hundredth of an inch of play so that they, it definitely sits flat. Otherwise, I have to sand this other piece down. And again, I'm using my quarter inch bit. And we're going to call this one. So that'll create our recess in there. And this one will create the recess on the outside. The next one I'm going to do in pairs, we can do these both at the same time. They're going to be our pockets. And since our wood was 0.86, I'm going to go ahead and take that down to 0.6. That's going to leave us about a quarter of an inch on each one of our pockets. And most of these are things I've learned through trial and error. A uh, quarter inch seems to be able to take a, a decent sized carve and it makes for a reasonably substantial box without being clunky. All right. And our last thing is to do our two outer cuts. Our two outer cuts going to be outside and we're just going to use the stock bottom right so 0.86 and call this cut out now one thing <laughs> if you ever do this you'll only really want to do it once uh, if you cut things out and you don't leave tabs your parts going to spin out of control and it's going to be a complete and total mess so we want to have some tabs here that'll hold our pieces in while it's making this cutout. And you'll notice the way this sits, our cut here is going to overlap. So we don't want any tabs here. We're going to want our tabs up here where there's some still some meat left for, to grab onto. So I'm going to change this. I tend to use mine about five millimeters high. It's just what, what they've got to me is overkill. 
I'm going to put two tabs on each side. They're easy enough to cut out on a bandsaw or with a handsaw. All right. And that should have our tabs. And just so that we can take a look, let's see what the simulation looks like. Yep, that looks about right. So we've got our outer cut, our tabs, our pockets, and then our lip here should match our lip here. We have all our stuff, and we're just going to save our G-code. Can't do periods in there. Okay, so now we should be ready to carve. So I've got my board all clamped up and ready to go. One of the things you'll notice about where I clamp this board is there's only two of these that are actually holding down on the top of the board. The rest of these are really designed to keep the board from moving side to side or up and back. When these motors get going, there's a lot of force trying to pull this board out of out of whack and if it does you ruin your piece so I'm much more happy to keep these flat and pushed up against the board it also lets me unclamp these pull this out and swap in another board of the same size if I'm cutting multiple boxes okay so now I've got everything zeroed out and I think we are ready to roll let's make a little bit of noise And so here we have our basic box pieces. Now we're going to do a little bit of band sawing and cut them out and then we can do a sanding pass on them. So now we have our two pieces and if we did our job right, oh yeah, perfect. Now I just need to sand those and we should have our basic box.